Okay, we're going to a, a thing in San Diego uh, in October. And there, there's no god awful hotels and motels in San Diego. Well, that's one of the things. I mean, here's part of it is Vegas works. I know they've been accused of gouging before, but Vegas works because they have all that lodging. They have the infrastructure. They have it there. They've got. Right? I mean, they've got. They've got the convention center. They have Sands. They have Mandalay mm -hmm. Bay. They have uh, most of the big hotels have huge uh, uh, convention halls in them. You know? And it's relatively easy to get around the city between yeah. what the buses, the taxis, and the yeah, monorail. That's right. So you can buy a monorail pass while you're there. You can buy a bus pass while you're there. Or mm -hmm. you can get together with a bunch of people and take a. Oh, I don't like, what is it, the one guy said you get 10 people in a limo at $5 a piece is less than riding a cab. Yeah. And you get to do the limo, so, and the limo just drops you off at your places because he's just going down the strip and then coming That's back. Right. So, so they're making their money, but um, the, the problem though is that the, the, the people can't, in this economy cannot justify, I mean, for instance, we're, make, we're basically, when we go to Vegas, we're gonna, we try to stay where we can get work done. But this year we're not having a kitchen because we can't justify the at cost of the kitchen, you know, on the suite. So we're, we've still got a great suite. I mean, God, we really had a good well, suite. Well, we're still getting a refrigerator and a microwave. Yeah, and a bar and a, and bar. a living room. We, we just don't have the full kitchen. We don't have the full kitchen, which we really like because it's really good to come back there and get some, make something because we would make something. So, you know, we'd buy, we'd go buy these little, like, Three dollar meals in a box, and God, those would be great. But uh, because of the fact that um, you know what it is, is that a lot of times they're jacking the prices up on the, on on the better quality places and dropping the prices on the others. So because the people down below, and also another reason why is they're adding resort fees on in Las Vegas, which is a killer. I mean, you spend twenty five dollars a night per room for resort fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what do you get for it? Well. Do you get uh, uh, free internet? No. Do you get free? You it's know, just another fee. It's just another fee in order to pay. Uh, you know, a fee on top of what you're already paying. You're paying. Okay, the way it works is this way: if you're paying 100% too much to begin with, and you add another 25% to mm -hmm. that 100%, you're paying 125% too much. Mm -hmm. So we we downsize. We downsize. Well, I think resort fees aren't taxable. I think it's just a straight fee. Yeah, it's just a straight fee. It's just something that they pay. I mean, you get nothing out of it because there's nothing you use on it. Well, you can use the gym. You can use the swimming pool. Uh, you know, if you're there for a if you're there for a convention or trade show, you they're don't not have using, the time. Not the time to do it. Heck, I mean, we, we even passed up a jacuzzi this time. So, because they were going to charge us a $25 resort fee to have a jacuzzi. Mm -hmm. and I like the jacuzzi because you go set in things and get your money. But, uh, you no, know, but um, the, the trade shows, have, I mean, we went, we went literally from full scale meals at lunch to uh, sandwiches, but they've taken like about a sandwich and cut it in like eight pieces and put it in little wrap mm -hmm. things. And uh, it, it, it's just gotten unbelievable. I mean, uh, or they went from full-scale warm lunches to box lunches now. And it's not, they only like have a, a quarter of the box lunches a lot of times that they have need for the people coming. So, because they're all cutting back. At a time, it just, uh, my father was a small businessman. My father's advice was that uh, when you know you have nothing left to lose, you, you go big time. If you know that you can't sell the goddamn product, you really throw everything you got out there, and you know, and hope it. You know, it's just like you throw. Up, you know, I, I used to be an advertising campaign. We'll throw it against the wall and see what sticks. That's what you do. If you believe in your product, you have to go big. <coughs> My father used to spend god awful amounts of money advertising homes he couldn't give away. And, you know, he'd pick some. Okay. Um, we pick late night television in the city of Los Angeles, which everybody watches back in those days because it was the only thing that was on all night long, and they had great advertising. Well, that, or you get to watch the what is it, the the fuzz. Yeah, and you know we'd come on because I because we were in the entertainment business, we could get you know my, my father would wrangle somebody in to do a commercial for nothing, and he'd say you know I'm you know hey this is the, you know the 
and I'm here, and I've got this great home. You know, nobody wants the goddamn thing, so he's putting it out at a discount. Was I supposed to say that on the air? Well, I said it anyway, but it's like at 3 o'clock in the morning. People actually were watching those things. You'd hear, did, you know, did that man actually say that on the air? And my father would say, yeah. And he said, God, you must really be something to have a guy that can actually speak like that, truthful to people. We would sell people. My father went in his desperation mode. He'd go get somebody to do a TV commercial. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was when you were basically, you knew the house wasn't going to sell, you know, and you had to do something so you could get somebody in the industry, you know, at 3 o'clock in the morning to come by and do a live spot. You know, what it is, or, you know, mostly a lot of time you see my father get, <coughs> and they'd be leaned up against the desk, and they would be, you know, reading off the teleprompter with their smile. So that's how that worked work at 3 in the morning. They're generally coming back from something and going to something else and they're doing it for nothing, for nothing. But that's when you go big time is when you, you're going to lose everything. It's just the same thing. My family is not all the Jews in my family. There's a, an old Jewish saying that if you know you're going to die today, you can choose to die as a lamb or a ram. And it's the same thing in business. If you know you're going, you, you, you know you can't continue the way you're doing it, you basically give it one grand shot, and if it doesn't work, well, you did your best and you move on. But instead, what they do with the, what they're doing the trade shows is that people, I mean, like one of them, I sent her the thing last night, which I thought was unbelievable. You know, they're they're cutting back. They've cut two thirds of the press out. They're cutting all the guests out that come in. The guests are the people that actually are the ones that do the buying at these things. They don't do the buying at the event. But they'll go back home and they'll tell mm -hmm. people. I mean, uh, well, what it is is that the trade shows want the chiefs and not the Indians. It's the Indians that do the purchasing at the trade shows. Yeah, because the Indians, because the Indians, the one that says, "Well, this is the one that is the best one." This they're is, like, "Okay, this works." So because they don't deal with it that intimately. I know it. The people upstairs only know what they're told by the people downstairs. And the people downstairs are now being restricted out of trade shows. Mm -hmm. You see the guys in the suits walking around. You don't see the guys in the t-shirts and the and the shorts. Because the guy in the suit is doing it based on. It's like, oh, that sounds good. Okay, so go no. look at it. But they don't buy anything. The guys upstairs buy nothing. All they do is that they, you know, well, you know, they. If you see nothing but suits, you know the trade show is dead. Mm -hmm. These are the guys that come in on Sunday and leave on Monday. And yet you'll walk around and, you know, the next day, where's everybody at? Yeah, but part of it is that's here in the U.S., overseas. But no, out of this country, they're, they're moving. Better. Yeah. Because there it's all hands-on in the rest of the world. It is totally hands-on. You come into their trade shows, and they, buy, they want everybody to come to their trade. You would not believe the invites we get to go to trade shows. They want the press there. They want people there. They're supposedly closed to the public. No, they're all open to the public. You just get a thing that says guest. And everybody, I mean, we went to one trade show where they were so unhappy about the way it was being done that they were standing in the hallway giving out guest badges to everybody that were coming. Everybody, would you like to see the, you know, come in and see our product and here's a best pass. Okay, would you like to? And they had hands full of them. And they were around the corner from where the check-in was and big people putting on things, they're going inside. My guess is they probably sold lots of merchandise mm -hmm. because they were putting the Indians on the floor. Not well, the here's one thing is if somebody's giving you a guest pass, you go and take a look at what they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So, because it's free. Uh, I mean, because, I mean, we can guarantee it's going to cost us, the, one of the trade shows was going to cost us like $30 for a day and a half pass. But since they don't like the press there anymore, I mean, we we go in as guests at some things because we're not the press is not welcome at the at some of the major trade shows which we are we are we, we actually are the top we are the biggest supplier of 3D material in the world, and you would not believe the 3D shows that we're not we're not welcome at, but we're welcome as guests. Mm -hmm. We go in and talk mm -hmm. to people as guests instead of press. They tell us the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and sometimes the guests are, a VIP is treated a heck of a lot better than a guy from the press is. Mm -hmm. Much better than a guy from the press is. He gets more advice to go to places where they eat. Mm -hmm. So, but, um, you know, we ran in and rave about the trade shows. It's just because, 
you know, we just came from one which basically, like I said, was, you know, it was an auto show that basically is, that there's no reason for existence. I've seen more cars on a parking lot on a, on, yeah. than they've seen in the train. Actually, show. you know, part of it is they had 40 ride and drives. So, for example, if you're actually looking for a car to buy, it's a good place to go try and ride it. Try and ride it, yeah. Mm -hmm. But the floor is not ride a good spot. Yeah. The floor was not a great spot to see anything. I mean, it used, I mean, it used to. I mean, some of the people that we know that basically go to all the auto shows continually had a god awful, unbelievably tiny display. They had their big semi there, but a little stage that wasn't much bigger than mm -hmm. than this thing here. That was their stage. Well, you know, I think part of it is because the show itself is not as significant. And the sad part is it's one of the first, it's actually our first, our first show um, to kick year. off the auto show season. It's where we break in every, we have new equipment, we're playing with it there, we're playing with everything. And we actually can get, because it has one thing going for it that it's basically, it, there's no music on on press day. Yeah. And, when the music and there's not a bunch of crowds around. And see, part of it is, is there's a lot of companies that are local. They, they brought out a lot of local dealers which supplied the cars. Yeah. But there's a lot of com corporate, corporate corporations, automotive, yeah. that are not too far. They're in the same county that you think they'd have personnel. No, there. no personnel. I mean, I'm talking to one of the uh, security people. You know, we're basically looking at the million dollar cars. And he. You know, he's, we're, I'm sitting here talking while she's taking, she likes to shoot undercarriages of automobiles, shoot them low. But I'm talking to the guy and he said, well, I know, they're supposed to be here, they aren't here. I don't know when they're coming. And he said, that, you know, he said, I know there's nobody over at there and I know there's nobody there. He said, he's going down the list that we have, our cheat sheet. He said, there's nobody at any of these things, mm -hmm. none of them. Because I said, I would know because I'm, you know, he basically he's like the, you know, top, one of the top security guys. And there's nobody, there. you know, it's a press day. There's nobody to answer your questions, so we, you know. So we were happy at Honda though, because Honda did put food out. Oh, and Ford had the people. Did have people to talk. Oh, to. Ford was good. Ford had their people there. Yeah, we had. We Ford had, was the only. One. Well, actually, no. Honda had a few people. Yeah, but Hank, then they had all that music. Yeah, but you couldn't do anything at Honda because there was so much music. I could not. We could not do the. You know, we we couldn't do the. Um, the shield vehicle because there was so much music in the background over there for that car. We I like do. the shield. And there's a problem. They used it in Thor. Yeah. And Captain America. And uh, the the basic problem is today is the people have gone crazy with digital rights management because they're now getting third party complaints, not second party, which are the owners, but third party people who worked on the productions mm -hmm. are now filing complaints. I mean, we can tell you I lost two thousand videos to third-party complaints. People that were worked on these things that you didn't have the permission of to put these pieces up from trade shows. I lost um, I lost six videos from the LA Auto Show because of third-party complaints. Oh, She's geez. lost, um, uh, what, what, what it was was we ended up with um, 46 videos lost to third-party complaints. Mm -hmm. Because you can't afford to go to court. So what happens is, you know that the trade shows are heavy on background music and they're heavy. You can't even show pictures anymore, products, because they throw, they get some. A uh, person that took the picture, well, you don't have my permission to put it up on television. You do not have my permission for this because they're not getting all encompassing things. When they're buying music, I mean, I mean I, one of the best things I had. Um, uh, okay, uh, I worked on the movie Fun and Acapulco with Elvis Presley as one of the dancers. I'm, I'm, they're, they're doing a sequence where I'm in it, so I really wanted, you know, when they're doing, you know, Bossa Nova, Bossa Nova, you know. I, they recreated that. At right, I know, but they got it in the background, and I can't use it because um, the digital rights people would get you on, on first. You have the music, which isn't permitted, even though they bought it for, it was a redoing of the whole thing, jigger, they rearranged everything for the, the, uh, the exhibit. And, um, but the, what happens is you don't have permission from the other dancers in a sequence to use, because those people, I mean, we're talking, I think it was uh, 1962, for now. Mm -hmm. That's 50 years ago, you see how old I am? But I'm just one of the dancers out there, you know, doing my, no, I can still move my hips for a good I'm actually 20 pounds lighter. I'm actually 30 pounds lighter than I've been. So, 
But no, that's what's going on. We've got so many things to deal with, and I don't think a lot of the press doesn't want to deal with it anymore. And the less press wants to deal with having to fight off things. I mean, like we supply material for another um, for a news organization. News organization now has it specifically written in their in the contract that the people that are involved in this in, in your interviews must understand that there is no remuneration for what they've done. It is a news piece, mm -hmm. and they simply, if you you know, um, another organization, we can't use pictures of the people unless we get a sign a sign off on everybody in the picture. How do you do that? You know, like you're, you're in the middle of a thing and there's an army around you and you have to have everybody that's in the picture signed so you don't use the picture. Yeah. So, you know, it, 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 this is the way it is because they're, mm -hmm. the litigation is horrible when you go to these events anymore. So we actually had to go get new software to remove music in the background. Yeah. So this really sucks when you have to do that, and we've, you know we've we've even been hit by newspapers about showing a newspaper. We got we had a whole we had a bunch of stuff removed because we were showing the newspaper, and the newspaper objected to their newspaper being shown. Um, and what were we doing in that piece with the newspaper? Promoting the newspaper. Promoting the newspaper. So guess what? We don't promote it anymore. We don't promote it anymore. We don't tell people because we're telling people that it offers something that nobody else can offer. You can't offer it on the internet because it is local, it has this, you know, it has all your local items, so they basically threaten us, so they don't get used anymore. But that's sort of, the, you know, a lot of what I think, I think because um, that a lot of what the people in the trade shows needs can no longer be done because of the changing climate and the you know, litigation climate and, um, and because there's just no money to put the shows on anymore. So, but I mean, that's our gripe about trade shows at the moment, how they're shrinking. We'll, we'll do it again as we're doing, you know, this is our trade show season. It started a week ago and it's got to go clean through, uh, what is it, April? Yeah. So, I hear lots of griping about trade shows. Got, I've written about them already, so. You know, but um, you know, we do write now too. Really big, you know, we're really going to know stuff here. We write also. So until next time, this is all Cam. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.montebolo.net on the net, and you can also check out our uh, MBN News Video Web um, Wire Service, which has a lot of information. What you know about what's going on in the entertainment business, sometimes in the auto, sometimes in racing, sometimes this, sometimes breaking news, it's just what comes up every day. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D, and thank you once again for over 40 million links on the internet. And oh yes, come join us on Facebook too, as well as Twitter. <laughs>